Hello, this is Mr. Philippec, and today's video is going to talk about the control of the cell cycle and what happens when the cell cycle isn't controlled and which eventually leads to cancer. Now, enzymes, and as if you might remember, enzymes or proteins uh, basically control the cell cycle by taking uh, the cell cycle and going from phase to phase. Uh, if you remember, you know, we have interphase and on to uh, metaphase, anaphase, telophase, cytokinesis. And some of the enzymes that are made are needed to start or begin uh, the cycle, and other ones just kind of keep them going. And where are those enzymes produced? Well, they're produced in our DNA. And those little tiny segments of DNA are called genes. And uh, please don't confuse those with Levi's 501 or Wrangler. Uh, remember, those are just little snippets of DNA, uh, which basically makes us us. Now, experiments uh, show that typically cells will keep dividing um, until they come in contact with, uh, you know, other cells. And what happens is, is that when they come in contact with other cells, they basically just stop growing. And so what happens here is that what that demonstrates really is that we can turn on or turn off cell division. And a great experiment here is, uh, let's say we have these three colonies of cells. And over time, they're going to kind of fill in the rest of this Petri dish with cells. And once we get to this stage right here, uh, the cells are going to stop growing. That's pretty much what happens with their skin. Well, to prove that, they did an experiment whereby they took a little scraper and they scraped off the cells. Uh, this is pretty much like if we flipped over our front of our handlebars on our bike and got a little road rash. Uh, this is exactly what happens with our skin. And so what happens is, is over time, the cells begin to grow towards one another. Uh, this is kind of filling in the cut or the scrape that we have until once again, um, we end up with, um, you know, one full layer of cells. And so what this shows is, is that we can turn on, which is down here, and turn off uh, cell division. So basically, how then is the cell cycle regulated? Well, it's re regulated by proteins. And uh, a particular protein called a cyclin um, kind of rises and falls as we go through um, cell division. And so basically these cyclins regulate or control the timing of the cell cycle. Now there are two types of regulation that occurs. One that happens inside and then one that happens outside. Uh, internal regulators are basically proteins that respond to events that happen inside the cell. Uh, hopefully that totally makes sense. And then obviously external regulators are those that respond to external. Uh, meaning that uh, in the case of cuts and scrapes, uh, external regulators kind of uh, kind of either speed up or slow down uh, the events of the cell cycle. So in times of trauma or emergency, maybe these external regulators really kind of pick up the speed uh, so our body can heal itself quicker. So what happens when these regulators lose control. Well, that is cancer. All right. It's basically just a cell or a group of cells that undergo a tremendous amount of uncontrolled cell division. And so how are these cells different? Well, they're different from the fact that they don't respond to the signals that regulate the growth of most cells. So those cyclins or those proteins that determine uh, cells as they go from one phase of mitosis to another, cancer cells don't listen. All right, uh, they just kind of go off onto their own way. And so what happens is, is that these cells begin to divide uncontrollably and form masses called tumors. And those tumors uh, either stay within themselves or start to damage the surrounding tissues. Um, and then eventually, if cancer really goes unchecked, uh, a lot of time cancer cells break loose uh, and begin to spread throughout the body. And we'll kind of talk about the different types of tumors and uh, the damage that these can cause. And then at the end here, show you some pictures, uh, the results of some of the more common cancers. So when typically does this uncontrolled cell division happen? Well, some scientists have hypothesized that this period of interphase, just before DNA replication, and if you remember, that's the S phase of interphase, uh, is a very, very critical point uh, in the cell cycle. Uh, a lot of scientists think it's right around this time that if any sort of mutation happens, and that means basically they're going to kind of damage to any of the DNA, 
uh, could trigger this uncontrolled cell division. And so what happens again, like we said here, is a lot of times these cancerous cells form tumors. Uh, and then eventually when those tumors break loose, like we said earlier, um, the body can undergo something called metastasis. Uh, which happens here is that the cancer cells kind of go every which way. They kind of go all over throughout the body and uh, pick up new colonies, much like what we saw with that contact inhibition cell earlier. So why... Uh, are we so concerned about tumors? Well, the problem is, is that tumors uh, basically rob nutrients from normal cells. They're almost like an invasive species. If you think about uh, in terms of ecology, uh, you know, if a plant or an animal comes in, let, let's even talk about the Asian carp. You know, cancer is kind of like the Asian carp of Lake Michigan. The Asian carp gets inside Lake Michigan, and it's going to eat up all the different kinds of fishes and things like that, and pretty much eradicate the entire ecosystem of Lake Michigan. Well, cancer works the same way, and there are two types of tumors. Uh, a lot of times, uh, they'll take a biopsy, and if the biopsy comes back and says benign, that means that the um, sample of tissue that they've taken uh, basically means that those tumor cells just kind of just pile up on top of one another. So they're just going to kind of stay you know, right in here. They're not going to spread anywhere. Um, if it comes back and the answer is malignant, what happens there is that malignant means that the cancer cells begin to spread to surrounding tissues. And then that's where we can get all that breaking loose of cancer cells and really cause a lot of damage inside the human body. Now, cancer is one of those major causes of death, uh, not only in the United States, but around the world. And, and the important thing here is that it can affect any tissue in the body. You know, a lot of times we hear about lung, breast, colon, prostate cancer, uh, but pretty much any, any uh, tissue uh, in the body can be uh, impacted. Matter of fact, there was a guitarist from the band Van Halen. Uh, his name was Eddie Van Halen, uh, oddly enough, and uh, he got cancer of the tongue. And uh, some people, uh, you know, some scientists hypothesized that he got it because he used to use a metal pick. And they think that some of that metal transferred to his tongue and caused some damage to those cells and then gave him uh, cancer of the tongue. So kind of one of those wild situations. Now this slide talks about some common environmental factors that can lead to um, certain genetic abnormalities that can lead to uncontrolled cell division. Uh, obviously smoke and, and secondhand smoke uh, being one of the major causes of lung cancer. Air and water pollution. Uh, you know, it's important that we keep not only the air we breathe clean, but also the water we drink. Um, exposure to UV rays is a major cause of uh, skin cancer. And so that's why it's so important to wear uh, some sort of sunscreen or some protection from the sun. Or a swim shirt. Uh, you see a lot of little kids wearing those uh, to really kind of cut down on the UV rays. And then uh, viral infections can get in there. Uh, viruses. Uh, kind of get in there and recode what a cell does. And if a virus gets in there and reprograms and damages the DNA of a particular cell, it can cause that cell to begin to divide uh, uncontrollably. And then, of course, there's always that family history or that family link to cancer. And that's why family history is so important to medical professionals. Uh, that's why, you know, the first time you go to your doctor, you have to answer those 50,000 questions about, have you ever had a nosebleed? Does your eye twitch? Uh, and then they start asking about uh, cancer and stuff like that because they really want to see, um, does it run in your family? And uh, are you more prone to get certain types of cancers than others? So what can we do to help prevent cancer? Well, studies have shown that diets that are low in fat and, and, and high in fiber, uh, the average human needs between 25 and 30 grams of fiber a day. Um, the average person gets between four and eight. Um, you know, that doesn't mean that we're going to go out and get uh, buckets and buckets of colon blow out there because uh, we'll have some gastrointestinal pain, but we should try to increase the amount of fiber. That'll really cut down on um, prostate cancer because remember, a colon uh, can just harbor a lot, of, a lot of schmutz or, you know, other uh, toxins in our colon if we don't have, uh, you know, enough fiber to kind of push everything through to the porcelain pool. Uh, obviously, we need uh, a nice variety of vitamins and minerals. And, you know, daily exercise. You know, we're not asking you to run the Chicago Marathon every single day, 
Uh, but most uh, dietitians or doctors will tell you simply just 30 minutes a day, uh, whether it be brisk walking, uh, you know, that's not the type of walking you see at a mall uh, where people are just rubbernecking everywhere. Uh, you know, some brisk walking, get the heart rate elevated a little bit. And then, of course, no tobacco use of any kind. And, uh, you know, that talks about lung cancer, but it also talks about mouth and throat cancer, uh, which we'll show you pictures of here in a little bit. Now, these next couple of slides might be a little uh, alarming here, so I just want to warn you here. This is uh, breast cancer. Uh, this is, uh, you know, from a, a mammogram or something like that uh, with regards to they find tumors and they find spots and then they have to go in there um, and, and then sometimes they have to remove some of the tissue in order to stop the spreading of it. This is skin cancer, and this is actually post-operation. You can actually see the stitches here um, that surround uh, this cut right here. They basically have to go in, sorry about that, uh, they have to go in there and dig out sometimes the skin cancer, which can get kind of gruesome. This, so this person's kind of healing. Uh, that little snapshot you saw earlier was stomach cancer. This tissue right in here is actually rotting. And uh, a lot of times uh, they have to go in and try to remove it. Uh, sometimes they have to bypass the stomach altogether. All sorts of uh, uh, treatment options, uh, whether it be chemo, radiation, uh, surgery, uh, things like that. That's a little picture of ovarian cancer, an ovary surrounded uh, by some cancerous cells. And then finally, this is mouth cancer. And what you see in here is uh, this is the inside of a person's mouth and it's rotting. Okay. Uh, sometimes this tissue gets so bad that there's a hole that forms, uh, which can really be detrimental to somebody. And uh, sometimes if the, if the cancer gets bad enough in their mouth, their whole jaw falls off. So bottom line is early detection detection is the key uh, and uh, you know try to try to keep uh, a healthy lifestyle so that's basically cancer and control the cell cycle and thanks for listening